فَمَن كَانَ فَمَن كَانَ فَمَن كَانَ يَرْجُو لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ذكر رحمة ربك عبده زكريا إذ نادى ربه نداء خفيا قال رب إني وأنا العظم مني واشتعل الرأس شيبا ولم أكن بدعائك 
قال رب إني وجن العظم مني واشتعل الرأس شيبا ولم أكن بدعاء ربك وَلَمْ أَكُنْ بِدُعَائِكَ رَبِّ شَقِيًّا وَإِنِّي خِفْتُ الْمَوَالِيَ مِنْ يرثني ويرث من آل يعقوب واجعله رب رضيا يا زكريا لم نجعل له من قبل سميا قال رب أنا يكون لي غلام وكانت امرأتي عاقرا قال رب أنا يكون لي غلام وكانت امرأتي عاقرا قال رب أنا يكون لي غلام وكانت امرأتي عاقرا وقد بلغت من الكبر عتيا قال كذلك قال رب ربك هو علي هين وقد خلقتك من قبل قال كذلك قال ربك هو علي هين وقد خلقتك من قبل ولم تك شيئا قال رب اجعل لي آية قال رب بِجَعَلْ لِي آيَةً قَالَ آيَةً كَأَلَّا تُكَلِّمَ النَّاسَ ثَلَاثَ لَيَالٍ سَوِيًّا قال رب اجعل لي آية 
Karianas for the beautiful recitation, inshallah. Uh, over to you, Imam Tarif. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. Today we reflect on a beautiful surah in the Quran, Surah Maryam. Uh, surah Maryam is almost part two uh, in a duet. Uh, part one was uh, Al Imran. So Al Imran spoke of this beautiful family that has been ennobled so much, a family that we all grew to admire because Allah Azza wa Jal granted, them, granted them nobility and that is the family of Imran, the father and the mother of Maryam who gave birth to Maryam and they're also uh, the relatives of Prophet Zakaria and Yahya. And as you're aware, Maryam is the mother of Isa. So they're all one family. And this family has been especially honored in the Quran. So this is a surah entitled by one of those uh, remarkable members of this family, a woman by the name of Maryam. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentions them as an example, an exalted example for you and me to be inspired by. If you recall, and, and our job is to really connect the verses of the Quran every single day in our lives. When we're praying, when we raise our hands, and when we do salah, we're saying, Ya Allah, ihdina sirat al-mustaqim, sirat al-fatiha. Ya Allah, guide us to the straight path, the path of those who received your favors and not the path of those who have gone astray or who, who earned this anger or wrath. Now, how do we know who are those people who received the special blessings of Allah? Allah describes them vividly and beautifully in the Quran, and it happens in the family of Imran and Maryam alayhi salam. This entire family is one of those very special families that Allah asks us to look at and learn from as a way to as a way to understand this straight path that we ask about in Surah Al-Fatiha. It's a family that inspires because of what? What is it that made this family so special? Allah gives us a glimpse. Now, if you were to think righteous family, an angelic family that is occupying the highest spiritual status, what would that family look like to you? What make, made them special? Allah is going to give us a glimpse into what made this family very special by opening the the surah with a scene, a scene in which you see the father, Zakaria, 
who happens to be Maryam's, um, the, the husband of Maryam's aunt, the husband of Maryam's aunt, is Prophet Zakaria, and here he is talking to Allah Azza wa Jal. So Allah Azza wa Jal says, ذِكْرُ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّكَ عَبْدَهُ زَكَرِيَا إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ نِدَاءً خَفِيًا of all things that you would think that would make someone special with Allah, you would not have thought of this. Allah refers in the opening scene of a private conversation that Zakariya had with Allah Azza wa Jal. And in that conversation, he said this. Allah gives us a window into that conversation. And pay attention to this. You and I would have never known what words Zakariya uttered, what that conversation looked like if it wasn't for Allah. Can someone know what you're saying to Allah in your private time, impossible. Can anybody, a stranger outside, know what you've said to your spouse or your, or your child unless you told them? It's impossible. How would we know? From hundreds and hundreds of years ago, what Zakaria said to Allah Azza wa if it wasn't for Allah. And the question is, why is Allah telling us what Zakaria said? Because it turns out that this is the essence of faith. This is what made Zakaria special. And it's going to be the thing that made Maryam special. He said to Allah this, Ya Allah, I complain to you, ya Allah. My bones became brittle and feeble. He has grown in age. It, it, according to the reports, he was between the ages of 65 and 80. And he had a desire. He had an anxiety. He said, Ya Allah, my, my bones are brittle and my, my hair is full of white hairs. My head is full of white hairs. Who speaks to, to, like that to Allah? Literally sharing with him his pain and his anxiety. Then he said to ya Allah, he said, Ya Allah, Inu Ya Allah, I'm afraid, I'm concerned about my relatives. Why is he concerned? He's concerned that there will be no one who will serve as an heir after him to carry on the religious duty, to pass on the deen too, so that he can guide the generation of people after him. That's the concern of that father. His concern wasn't passing on his wealth, passing on the family name. His main concern is, Ya Allah, when I die, Who's going to carry, carry the torch after me to guide the people after me to you? And my relatives are not going to take care of it. Ya Allah, I'm feeble. I'm not supposed to be able to have children. And my wife has grown also in age and she is barren. She cannot have children. Physically, it's impossible. Does, ha does that stop him? It seems to be an impossible situation in life. And yet, Allah shows us the faith and the trust of Zakaria who despite the physical limitations that he and his wife had, and because of that sincerity he had, he turned to Allah and said, Ya Allah, grant me a righteous child, even though it's physically impossible. Allah Azza wa tells us what happens. He said, Ya Zakariya, inna nubashiruka bi ghulam. Instantly, Allah delivers his providence. And Allah answers the servant of Allah by saying, Oh Zakariya, glad tidings to you. That announcement might have been delivered to him with a, you know, by an angel or directly, Allah knows. Allah Azza wa says to him, Ya Zakariya, we deliver to you the glad tidings of a son. His wife hasn't conceived yet. Of a son, his name is Yahya, and no one has ever carried that name before. Yahya, in Arabic language, it means that who lives. That who lives, because it's Allah who gave him life. And it would have been an impossible thing for a child to, to be conceived in, those, in this situation. And yet Allah, the giver of life, for whom nothing is impossible, delivered and answered the dua of Zakaria. This is what happens next. Zakaria asked for something impossible. He had full faith and trust in Allah. And Allah says, done. It's nothing for me. Kun fayakun, be and it is. You know what happened to Zakaria? Zakaria, despite his trust in Allah, he was still astonished. And he was full of, you know, filled with awe and wonder. He said, yeah, oh Allah, how, how is it that I will have a child even though my wife is barren? despite the fact that he just asked for it, because it's overwhelming. It's amazing. It's a sign of Allah's power. He said, oh, Zakaria, this is nothing for me. This is nothing for me. When I say be, it is. It's as such, and the fact that I'm giving you a child is no more difficult than me creating you from nothing to begin with. Nothing is impossible for Allah. And then he said to him, Ya Allah, give me a sign that my wife will be pregnant. What will be the sign? He said, Zakaria, the sign will be that you will not be able to talk for three days. So despite the fact that you have a tongue and it's healthy, suddenly out of the blue, you're gonna find yourself incapable of speaking for, period, for, for, for a few days. 
And indeed that came to Zakaria and he wasn't able to speak for three, these three days. And it was a sign for him and his people. And indeed his wife conceived of Yahya. And Yahya was delivered brothers and sisters. And Allah describes him beautifully. And he says regarding Yahya, and this is what made him a special child. And he was the cousin of, of, uh, of, of, of Isa alayhi salam. He says concerning him, uh, when, he, when he described him in his beauty, what did he say about him? What were the qualities that made Zak- Yahya so special? A special righteous child that was the fulfillment of a sincere dua of a father who was struggling, who never doubted Allah. Allah says regarding him, we've granted him wisdom and gentleness and compassion and purity and he was dutiful to his parents. So when Allah praised Yahya, it was because of this. His gentleness, compassion, wisdom, and his dutifulness to his parents. And Allah says, we're going to bless him in his life. And on the day he dies, and on the day he he is resurrected. Bear in mind, Yahya was skilled at young age. So the struggle is real. And despite the fact that this is a righteous, blessed family, doesn't mean they, they didn't go through struggle. You know, Yahya was executed, brothers and sisters, at a very young age. Imagine the pain of his parents and the pain of those who have who've known him. And imagine his own struggle as he went through this. Allah then introduces another beautiful episode in the surah, the story of Maryam alayhi salam, who was conceived herself and brought up in righteousness. She became this incredible righteous child as a result of the sincere dua again of her parents. Her mother said, Ya Allah, I dedicate to you what's in my belly for your service. So the dua of her mother was, Ya Allah, whatever is in my belly, and she thought she had a male. I want that child to be dedicated to serving Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, the Masjid of Aqsa in Jerusalem. She wanted that child dedicated. Then Allah told her, it's a female, not a male. She was shocked. It wasn't customary for them to have a female serving in the serving you know the the home of allah the house of allah Hazajal. and ya allah says this is going to be a righteous child and he names the surah with her name now what does maryam mean he told the mother what to name her and the name was maryam and maryam means in aramaic the devout worshiper the devout worshiper who's dedicated to the worship of allah Hazajal. this is the meaning of the word maryam beautiful meaning indeed and Maryam became the fulfillment of her mother's dua, her father's dua, and of her name herself. Rasulullah tells us that Maryam salam, is one of the most perfect, you know, uh, perfect women in existence. And she is one of the uh, most righteous, most remarkably righteous and devout women that have ever lived. And she's going to be one of the four women who will be like the masters of all women the highest rank in Jannah. Why is that? What is it that gave her that uniqueness that she becomes a role model for all of us? Just as Zakaria. What is it that distinguished her? It was her purity. Allah Azza wa describes to us a beautiful scene again in which she was informed by Allah through his angels that she's going to conceive of a child. Maryam had no husband. Imagine her struggle. When she received the news, she was overwhelmed and she became very concerned. How is it that I'm going to have a child even though I have no husband? Allah told her the same thing he told Zakaria. Nothing is impossible with Allah. All he has to do is say, be, and it is. And indeed, the thing that distinguished that family and Maryam and Zakaria and Yahya and Isa was this incredible faith and trust that Allah can make anything possible. And they never doubted Allah. She trusted on Allah. Then she saw her selling her belly growing, so she retreated because she was concerned, you know, from the slander. Indeed, she's a human being. And she understood that people are very harsh. And that as soon as they see her belly growing, they're gonna question her and say, Oh Maryam, you've committed something so heinous. So Allah describes a beautiful scene again. And he says she retreated under this tree when she could no longer bear the pangs of her child delivery of the birth of the childbirth. So she fell under this tree, a palm tree. And Allah describes a conversation. She said, because of her worries and her concerns, she said, Ya Allah, I wish I wasn't even alive. I wish I, wish I wasn't alive. Why, brother, sister? Because 
the circumstances of life hit us hard. And she's a devout woman who served Allah Azza wa Jal. She was really concerned about the slander of people despite her trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. So she says, I wish I was a thing unremembered. And Allah Azza wa Jal records this to remind us that the pain of people is real. The pain of righteous people is real. And your pain and my pain are real. And we're not to question pain. What Allah is looking for is trust. When she trusted in Allah in her private time with Allah, just as Zakaria, what happened? She turned to Allah under the tree because there is no aid but Allah. Allah made her deliver the baby, Isa, and Isa spoke from underneath her, telling her, O oh mother, don't grieve. Allah has provided a stream under you. Water started to gush from underneath her. And he said to her, just shake the tree and the, and the dates will drop on you. Allah will provide for you. And then Allah told her something. He said, don't speak. When you return back to the, to the people, fast, and Allah will give you a sign. And indeed, he made her child speak from the cradle. Incredible, powerful miracle from Allah, who stood to defend his mother. So he spoke in front of his mother and in front of the people saying, I am the messenger of Allah. Impossible, isn't it? But yet nothing is impossible with Allah. Let's wrap with the, with the gist of this, the essence of this. What does it say? What do these two stories tell you? What they tell you is that this is a family that became so remarkable that they're recorded in the Quran, that they're mentioned in the Quran as an inspiration for all of us, that Maryam is going to be one of the leaders of, of the people in Jannah, one of the, the masters in Jannah. Why is that? Why was Zakaria so elevated and ennobled? It was because they had a private connection with Allah. And Allah records for us what they've done in their private time with Allah. When they were in isolation, in their quarantine, quote unquote, what did they do? They understood how to speak with Allah. It turns out that underneath all the rituals of Islam, all the religious duties that we know of, that we practice, you know what the essence of it all? the secret of it all. The goal of Islam is what? It's to build between you and Allah a private relationship in which you speak with him and open your heart. And Allah tells us, look at what happened when Zakaria opened his heart to me and spoke and shared his pain and didn't doubt Allah. Look at what happened when Maryam didn't doubt Allah in her private struggle, in her private chamber, in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa or under the tree. There are all times of isolation if you notice they understood that they can turn to Allah and they made fervent dua to Allah, fervent dua with such sincerity and purity and full trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. When they did this, when they shared their hearts with Allah, when they didn't doubt Allah and when they complained of their pain like Zakaria saying, Ya Allah, you know, my hair is full of white hairs. My, bone is fe my bones are feeble. Ya Allah, nothing is impossible for you. Ya Allah, give me a child, even though it's not possible. Allah delivered his providence to both of them. This is why it became a remarkable family. Isn't that something you and I can easily do? Absolutely, brothers and sisters. It's not in the quantity of the worship to Allah. It's in our presence with Allah. It's in being with Allah. It's in you right now, sitting in this month of Ramadan, in your quarantine and in my quarantine, capitalizing on this time with Allah to share what's in our heart, to speak to Allah like we would speak to a friend, to say, Ya Allah, I'm, I'm fatigued, Ya Allah, I'm overwhelmed. Ya Allah, I have this situation that is overwhelming. Ya Allah, nothing is impossible for you. Just as you have provided for Zakaria, just as you've provided for Maryam, Ya Allah, aid me, aid my spouse, aid my children, grant us your mercy, to Allah, Ya Allah. I tell you, brothers and sisters, in the remaining days of Ramadan, with some 14, 15 days remaining, there's nothing more glorious you and I can do than doing what Zakaria and Maryam did, which is to sit in our private space with Allah and to open our hearts and raise our hands with full trust, full hope in Allah saying, Ya Allah, nothing is impossible. And bear in mind, Zakaria said, Ya Allah, I never failed as long as I've been making dua to you. I've never been miserable because of my dua to you. That was Zakaria. That's why he was so special, brothers and sisters. And bear in mind, what's coming up is also Laylatul Qadr. In those last 10 nights of Ramadan, Laylatul Qadr, Allah, a night like no other. And indeed, the best thing you can bring to Allah in those nights and in Laylatul Qadr is a heart that is yearning for Allah, is a heart that says, Ya Allah, I'm weak, I'm desperate for you, nothing is impossible for you. Raise your hands and ask for the impossible. 
and never say it's impossible for Allah Azza wa Allah is all powerful. We ask Allah Azza wa to grant us His mercy and to grant us that purity and devotion to Him like He granted it to the family of Imran and to make us walk in their footsteps and to join us with them, with Maryam and Zakaria and Yahya and Isa and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Jannah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum. Thank you, Imam Tarif. Um, before I hand it over to Kari Anas for, for the dua, I have several announcements to make and I appreciate everybody's patience. So we are working with several churches who have supported ICCP in the past. St. James, St. Seven Locks, Church of Redeemer, St. John's Norwood. And uh, so these churches we have Work uh, collaborated with them financially to help the needy as well as the front frontline personnel uh, in this COVID-19 situation, and uh, they appreciated the support and uh, wanted me to thank our community members for this for their uh, support and effort, and we appreciate it. So I wanted to make sure that everybody hears this news that we are helping out um, in the as part of our interfaith outreach program. Secondly. Um, as part of this ongoing situation with the virus, ICCP has arranged a food drive, uh, a drive-through food pickup with packaged boxed items, inshallah, on May 17th from 12 to 4. So we are putting a box together with 20 items, and that would be safely delivered to folks driving into ICCP. We already have the volunteers listed, and I know several people had called me, but because of the restriction, we only limited to so many people and we have them lined up. And I wanted to share that we're gonna deliver these boxes, food boxes uh, to folks driving in. And I'll be sharing the flyer uh, with all of you tomorrow. And they'll be inshallah on May 17th, the next Sunday, 12 to four at ICCP. And lastly, um, want to talk about the fundraising, our first fundraising appeal went to each of you yesterday in the mail, as well as we had a special announcement email. We tried to put a lot of effort. As you know, we only come to you only once a year. And this time our focus is to construct a new barn. And please, we need your support badly and we appreciate your generous donation. So please look at that. We're also enhancing our website. Uh, there were some questions on that. We're enhancing the website. There's a donate pledge button on the website that's available. The donate takes you to the PayPal. The pledge, you can put your information in. If there's any question on the pledge amount, I've already put on the chat, the text uh, um, in the chat, the cell phone number, which is 301-537-8350. 301-537-8350. If there's any question on the pledge, we can do that. And um, as I said, we'll be enhancing the website so you can designate whether it's a fitra or zakat or masjid or barn shortly. But in the meantime, you can continue donating on the website and we look forward to your generous donation. Thank you. Over to you, Kari. Uh, Inshallah, before I start the, the dua, uh, tomorrow I will start from uh, Juz 17, from Surah Al-Anbiya, Ayah 83. Juz 17, Surah Al-Anbiya, from Ayah 83, Inshallah. Also, I'm going to make a special dua for the parents, Inshallah, so raise your hand, Inshallah, and may Allah accept from all of us. <clears throat> اللهم يا رب السماوات والأرض يا عالم الغيب والشهادة أسألك بأسمائك الحسنى وصفاتك العلى وبإسمك العظيم الذي إذا سئلت به أعطيت وإذا دعيت به أجبت أنت ترفع درجات أنت ترفع درجاتنا ودرجات أولادنا ودرجات أهلنا 
ودرجات والدينا وترزقهم الفردوس الأعلى من الجنة من الجنة من الجنة والجنة ومن غير حساب ولا سابق عذاب وأن تحرم عليهما عذاب النار يا حي يا قيوم اللهم اعتقهم من النار اللهم اعتقهم من النار ومن عذاب القبر وأن تجعلهما ممن لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون وأن تسقيهما شربة هنيئة من حوض نبيك وحبيبك محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام اللهم طهر قلوبنا من النفاق وأعمالنا من الرياء وألسنتنا من الكذب وأعيننا من الخيانة فإنك تعلم خائنة الأعين وما تخفي الصدور اللهم يا فارق الفرقان منزل القرآن خالق الإنسان عالم السر والإعلان بارك اللهم لنا ولجميع المسلمين في صوم شهر رمضان وأعنا فيه وفي غيره بالصبر على الصلاة والصيام والقيام وتلاوة القرآن واقطع اللهم عنا حزب الشيطان وزحنا اللهم عن النيران وامن علينا بالتوبة والغفران والقبول والرضوان اللهم دخلنا الجنة اللهم دخلنا الجنة اللهم دخلنا الجنة اللهم ارحمنا إذا عرق منا الجبين وكثر منا الأنين اللهم ارحمنا إذا يأس منا الطبيب وبكى علينا الحبيب اللهم ارحمنا إذا وارانا التراب ودعنا الأصحاب وفارقنا النعيم وانقطع عنا النسيم اللهم إن إنا نسألك الراحة عند الموت والعفو عند الحساب والفوز بالثواب والنجاة من العقاب يا عزيز يا وهاب يا ذا الجلال والإكرام وصل اللهم وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل وسلم وبارك على أهله التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين كاريانس جزاك الله over to you Tari Arhamar Rahimin Ya Allah You are the most gracious You are the most merciful We ask you about your glorious name and your beautiful attributes Ya Allah That you bestow upon us your mercy Ya Allah we ask you, Allah, that you enfold us in your care and in your affection. Grant us sincerity and purity, Ya Allah, just as you granted it to Zakaria and Yahya and Isa and Maryam. And to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, grant us purity, Ya Allah. Grant us, Ya Allah, guide us to your straight path, Ya Allah. Grant us elevation and nearness to you in these blessed days of Ramadan. We ask you for your forgiveness, for your thorough and complete forgiveness, Ya Allah. Do not, Ya Allah, Take us to account for any, on account of any of our mistakes, Ya Allah, for our mistakes are, Ya Allah, are countless. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, pardon us completely. You are pardoning, you love to pardon and pardon 
pardon us, Ya Allah, pardon our spouses, our parents, our children, Ya Allah, pardon us, Ya Allah, we ask, Ya Allah, that you grant us your forgiveness, your mercy, Ya Allah, to relieve us, Ya Allah, of our afflictions, Ya Allah, relieve us, Ya Allah, give us a way out of our troubles and our hardships and our struggles, Ya Allah. We ask, Ya Allah, that you join us with Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to place us under your shade on the day when there is no shade but your shade, Ya Allah, make us, Ya Allah, among those who trust in you. Make us, Ya Allah, among those who testify to your oneness, who surrender to Ya Allah. Make us among the, those, Ya Allah, whose du'as are answered, Ya Allah. Grant us certainty, Ya Allah, a certainty of heart. Make our hearts firm, Ya Allah, upon your faith. Ya Allah, grant us a sight of your face. Grant us a sight of your face, Ya Allah, and do not deprive us, Ya Allah, of that ultimate bliss. Bless our families. Bless our community, Ya Allah. Bless our masjid. Bless ICCP and allow us to gather, Ya Allah, under its roof, Ya Allah, soon, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, allow us to go back to our center of worship, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, allow us to go back as families, Ya Allah, as friends, as brothers and sisters, Ya Allah, and unite us, Ya Allah, in that bond of faith, Ya Allah. Spread love amongst us. Spread love amongst our hearts, Ya Allah, and protect us from the shaytan. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen. Wa salli lahum ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.